Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to uh, be here at uh, TEDx UNI Heidelberg. So um, what you're going to be seeing here very shortly is a talk about what's called voluntary climate action. It's a talk about you. It's a talk about you. It's a talk about a lot of people that you don't know yet and that you will see something about in a moment. Some of the parts of what, will, uh, what you will see in a moment will depress you. It depresses me too. But some of it that you will see will also hopefully you know, build you up, and that's the kind of stuff that builds me up too. So if you talk about voluntary climate change, um, uh, sorry, voluntary climate action, invariably you're going to be talking about climate change. But the climate change I want to talk about, you're not going to be seeing you know, uh, scorched uh, soil or ice bears uh, floating on ice shelves, because I'm an economist, and I'm interested in choices. So, and the choices that you know, are in the context of climate change are myriad. These are choices that you and I take every day and that make a difference to what happens globally on planet Earth. One way to think about these choices that we make when it comes to climate change, one way to make it really salient and to kind of put it in a nutshell, is to demonstrate these changes as one that concern today and the future. It's a choice between, on the one hand, making a choice in favor of more material benefits now. Cars, iPhones, more meat, and all these things are you know, great. We want them, we like them, a lot of people like them. But the problem is that in exchange for having more of these goods, we're imposing you know, more climate damage in the future. Another choice would be to go in and to do less of these things, to try to avoid climate change coming later, but uh, if we do this, then this means that we need to give up some material benefits now. And this is the real crucible that we're facing when it comes to the context of climate change. So the question that, our, uh, that we have as humans on this planet is what to do, how to make a decision about these types of issues right before us. Now, some people take the decision to do something against you know, climate change, to lessen you know, climate change into the future, and these kind of people do what we call voluntary climate action. And voluntary climate action is the type of action that people take that go above and beyond what your government mandates you to do you know, through you know, regulations and laws. And what's of interest to us, uh, or why is there not more, why don't we all engage in voluntary climate action? Well, there are people out there Al Gore and others, who believe that what's stopping all of us from engaging in voluntary climate action is the fact that maybe we don't know enough about how to engage in voluntary climate action, or sometimes we lack the opportunity. And one thing that interests me as an economist is to kind of put these questions to the test. What I'm going to be doing, I will be removing the question of the know-how and the question of the opportunity, and then I'll be trying to understand a little bit more about our guy here, so how our guy here makes his choices about you know, voluntary climate action. What I'll be interested in is not just uh, whether or not this person decides in favor of more material benefits today or uh, saving the climate later. I'm also interested in what kind of things might make a difference in his choice. And one of the things that our uh, economists are very interested in is what are the sacrifices? So how, many, how much material benefits do you need to give up today in order to save the climate? And in order to make this choice a little bit more salient, we want to make these things a bit more concrete. So we want to talk about in very concrete terms about what voluntary climate action might mean. So on the plus side, what you could be creating by voluntary climate action is to actually taking one ton of CO2 out of the global carbon stock of the world. And this would have a beneficial impact on the climate tomorrow. And when we talk about what we need to give up, we need to talk about material benefits. What could be concreter material benefits than cash? So let's put some cash on the other side. For example, it could be two euros now. Or, if that's not enough, maybe we give you 10 euros now. Maybe we give you 50 euros now, and you're still favoring you know, protecting the climate. But once we move to 100 euros, maybe you look at this you know, choice in a different way, and you start thinking that maybe you would rather take the 100 euros now and maybe worry about the climate later. If these choices sound familiar to many of you in the audience, well, the reason is that you know, we did exactly this. We created the know-how, we gave you the opportunity, and you know, you, many of you faced, you know, faced a choice today, and this choice that you faced today you know, came to you in the form of this little choice slip that you could fill out. 
So yes, some of you had a choice between 50 euros uh, and you know, uh, removing one ton of CO2 from the climate. Some of you um, had a little bit of a smaller sacrifice to make. Some of you only had to give up two euros in cash today to save the climate. Some of you had to give up 10, and some of you, yes, had to give up 100 euros. So, and in this context, then the question is, well, how exactly did TEDx Uni Heidelberg decide about its trade-off between you know, some material benefits today and making some contribution about the climate uh, for tomorrow? So we had 77 participants that took part in this experiment that we just ran between you know, uh, the first block and the block today. And out of these seven, seven, 77 participants, 78% chose voluntary climate action. So most of you were interested in saving the climate. A good 22% chose cash. Right? So they are, you know, if their envelope was drawn, they're going to be walking home with some cash in their pockets. Does this depend on the sacrifice you had to give up? So did it make its difference whether you had to give up two euros or a hundred euros to make this change with this decision? Well, yes, it did. So if you look at this graph here, right? So here we have down here the share of participants that chose the voluntary climate action. On the other axis, you see the prize that you were offered. And, you, and what you can see here is what an economist would technically call, call a demand curve. Right? So essentially, the more expensive we make it for you to be engaging in climate action, well, the less likely you are to volunteer to save the climate. And this is uh, you know, a basic result. And this actually means that this makes a difference. So how expensive it is, what the sacrifices are, will matter for the question how we make this decision whether or not to you know, engage in voluntary climate action. Do you believe that this result is a good guide to what the German population might do as a whole if they had the opportunity to, to make the same choices you did? Okay, well, let's have a look uh, whether this is the case or not, uh, because we did this. We actually ran the very same experiment with in, in Germany. Now, of course, it would have been prohibitively expensive to um, ask all of the Germans to make this choice just the way that we uh, did it with you, so we had to kind of engage a little trick. So what we did here in Heidelberg, you will have seen, is to kind of take about 80 participants, using you, and you're not the average crowd, right? And uh, we engage in essentially a pen and, pe pen, pen and paper direct experiment with you in order to get these things going. It's not so easy to run this uh, across the whole of Germany. So what we have, we take about 3,000 people to kind of take this choice. And these people uh, will be you know, uh, a representative sample of the German population. And of course, since we cannot do pen and paper, they will be taking this choice through the internet, right? Through a web, web portal and an internet panel company. And essentially what they saw was not the paper slip you saw, they essentially saw a basic decision screen that looked like this, where at the bottom of this, they faced exactly the same choice that they had to make that you uh, saw before. In this case here, this person was given 46 euros. We used many more prices than before. So now maybe you want to form an opinion about how the results with all the Germans might or might not be the same as you had here in Heidelberg. So let me give you the basic results in Germany. So out of 2,440 subjects that actually completed this assignment, how many chose the voluntary climate action? 16%, right? 82% chose the cash, right? So, and now let's see whether we can trace out the same demand curve that we had before. So here you see the same thing. So down here, the share of the subjects, choosing the contribution. Up here you see the price or the material benefit they had to give up. What you can see here is that for no price here do we have more than half of the people actually accepting. Even down for two euros, right, we don't have more than 50% you know, doing something for the climate. So that's maybe the depressing part of it. But the other thing you'll find that's interesting is it's not very price sensitive, right? So those people that want to do something for the climate, they will do it almost irrespective of the price. And the others that they don't care, it doesn't matter whether it's cheap or expensive, they will not do it. There's a bit of a price response, but it's actually not very strong. So what's the difference? So why is it that we have this you know, super voluntary climate action, you know, enthusiastic um, uh, audience here, 
and when we go out into the general population, we don't find these types of results going up. Well, actually, if you look at the, at the structural reasons for this that we can deduct from out of our research, actually, this becomes the hopeful part of the story because it's actually predictable what makes people engage or not engage in voluntary climate action. So if we start here with native voluntary climate action at the bottom, the rather depressing result, if we make people aware of climate change, this goes up by a factor of four. You are all aware. You're well informed about climate change, so this is going to make a difference. The second important factor, factor 1.5, is whether or not people are educated. And having more schooling, having you know, a university degree has a tremendous impact on people's willingness to engage in voluntary climate action. And then finally, you were, of course, taking this decision in a group setting. Other people were seeing what you were doing, right? So as a result, you know, there are big peer effects. Right? So seeing other people engage in action has a tremendous impact on what people do, another fact of 1.5. And actually from this you now comes a very clear lesson, how to think about voluntary climate action and what might be the doing it part of uh, voluntary climate action. Awareness means talk about it, talk about climate change to people around you. Education, get informed, inform others, educate people, and finally be seen doing the right thing. And this might get VCA going. Thank you.